Develop and grow. I was looking for things for this segment, Chad, and I came across an article by one of my favorite writers, a man by the name of Kevin Kelly, okay. uh, someone who I think is absolutely fascinating. And he had his birthday the other day. I think he turned 68. And so he posted a blog post on his on his website oh. talking about 68 pieces of wisdom that he's learned over his years. Cool. And when I saw this, I was immediately there because I think he's <laughs> a genius. And so I've pulled out some of my favorite ones, Chad. And so I'll go through them quite quickly and we can chat about them. But basically, they're little statements or little idioms that stand for themselves and hopefully it can give you some inspiration inspiration and some food for thought as you move into the rest of the week. Right. The first one, learn how to learn from those who disagree with or even offend you. See if you can find the truth in what they believe. Yep. Now, I think that's great because so much, so many of us are kind of stuck in our bubble and we struggle to have conversations with people that we disagree with because it all of a sudden descends into being defensive, into fighting, into kind of arguing and calling each other names, etc. How can you learn from people who offend you? How can you try and see it from their perspective? That's a crucial, crucial skill, I think, Chad. Yeah, absolutely. It is such a crucial one, but it's really a hard one to do in practice. Uh, and so I think we just need to be a bit more patient and uh, and really start probing a lot more into how we can actually unlock that. What's the next one? The next one is that being enthusiastic is worth 25 <laughs> additional IQ points. And I love this. It's simple. It's to the point. Yeah. I, for one, am a very enthusiastic person. My friends make fun of me because I always say <laughs> that movie was the greatest thing I've ever seen or that book was the greatest book I've ever, ever read. And I say that for everything that I see. <laughs> but I really think it makes a big difference in the world. If you're yeah. enthusiastic and optimistic, I think you can have a better life. Absolutely, completely agree there. The next one is that pros are just amateurs that know how to gracefully recover <laughs> from their mistakes. And mm. I love this as well because everyone makes mistakes and the ones that the ones that don't succeed are the ones that give up or the ones that kind of get defensive and blame yeah. other people. The pros are able to make a mistake, figure out what went wrong and then kind of recover from it and kind of own that mistake. And that's a big thing for all of us, I think. The next one is chatting about conversation, and that's the rule of three. So when you're chatting to someone, to get the real reason for what they are feeling or what they're thinking yeah. about, ask a person to go deeper than what they just said. Yeah. So ask again, and why? And then ask again, and why? And often the third answer is more close wow. to the truth than their original kind of point. And I think wow. those, for you, those of you in relationships, this is incredibly important, <laughs> because often the reason that your partner might give you for feeling a certain way is not the truth. It's just something they're trying to get the conversation going. And you have to learn to be able to dig past those layers to get to the real reason behind it. It's such a silly one because why would us as humans put up so many layers and really have to force another person to peel back the onion, peel back every layer? And we've spoken about this before, Barry. We've spoken about it in the context of mental health. Obviously, it's Mental Health Awareness Week this week. Um, and so I think obviously relevant to discuss there. And, and that point of ask twice in that case uh, that we spoke about before, where you ask someone, how are you doing? And the default is, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm good ask twice, get a little bit more detail. And this sort of idea of asking three times, even better. Exactly. So go and try it out there in the real world and report back to us as to what you find. The next one, don't take it personally when someone turns you down. Assume yeah. they are just like you. They are busy, they are occupied, they are distracted. And try again later. It's amazing how often a second try works. Yeah. Now, this is very important because in our world today, we are kind of plagued by people ghosting us, by people blue ticking us. There's all these terms yeah. in the language for ideas when we don't get the attention we think we deserve. And often we kind of attribute it to malice. We kind of think the person doesn't like us or was trying to hurt us. But often it's just because life is busy and unfortunately they maybe forgot yeah. to reply, et cetera, et cetera. So always give it a second try. Don't let your ego get in the way and actually realize that everybody is busy and distracted and yeah. all over the place. Yeah, it's a really good one. And as as I'm speaking here, I'm 100% guilty of blue ticking Barry yesterday. Uh, by complete <laughs> mistake, I realized this morning when I opened up my phone that I didn't reply. Um, but it is one of those, like you said, there's always different cases. And, and I think we just as people need to stop our minds from racing to actually get to the truth of, of the matter. The next one is to show up and keep showing up. Someone successful said that 99% of success is just showing up. Right? It's a reminder to all of us that unless you put yourself out there, unless you take risk, unless you get into the arena, nothing can happen. Right, You can't win by sitting in the sidelines. And so if you keep showing up time and time and time again, eventually things will go your way and you'll create your own luck. The next one, Chad, is a little bit weird for me, but I think it makes a lot of sense. And what he says is, before you are old, attend as many funerals as you can bear and listen. Wow. Nobody talks about the departed's achievements. 
The only thing people will remember is what kind of person you were while mm. you were achieving. Now, this thing really hit me at, at heart because I'm a big A type. I've got these huge goals for my life. Yep. I often judge myself by my achievements in a professional sense and whatnot. And this is a good reminder for us that that doesn't dictate your legacy in this world, right? Your achievements are going to be forgotten. But the kind of person that you are, the character, the values that you live, all of those things are what the people are going to remember you for. And so I think going to funerals or at least talking to old people, talking to people who have lived a full life and getting a sense as to what actually matters is a good perspective for us to ensure that we're not always focused on what is the next thing to achieve, what is the next box to tick, what is the next piece of success to chase, but rather figuring out how do we become better people. That's profound, and I can see how that uh, hit home with you, Barry. Absolutely profound. The second last one is that anything real begins with a fiction of what it could be. So imagination is therefore the most potent force in the universe, and a skill you can get better at. It's the one skill in life that benefits from ignoring what everyone else knows. And why I like this is because it's a reminder to all of us to kind of take the less trodden path. Like, try something different. Like, be willing to be seen as weird or silly or strange because you're chasing an idea that is different because that's what kind of imagination and creativity is all about. And the more you can do that, the better chance you have of making a real impact on this world. Yeah, and that one really fits nicely with the idea of, of looking at the world with that childlike wonder that we speak about so much, Barry. And that is really where all of the great sort of innovations and developments of this world come about. And one more, Chad. I know I've been done a lot, so I'll put you out of your misery. The last one here is, over the long term, the future is decided by optimists. To be an optimist, you don't have to ignore all of the many problems that we create. You just have to imagine improving our capacity to solve those problems. And I think it's a great place to end Kevin Kelly's little pieces of advice. Be an optimist. Believe we can do better. Believe we can make this world a better place. I've been reading quite a bit about this, funny enough, this idea of optimist and about lots of people kind of accusing others of being Pollyannas. Um, but it is such an important one. And just having that optimism is, is really just so useful. And it really just gives you an out. You can actually see the end of the tunnel. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, where I think a lot of people just get stuck. And, uh, you know, in that pessimism, it, it's just really so hard to get out of. Um, so, Barry, I think you are certainly uh, a contributor of a lot of optimism in this world. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of carry on with that and take it on with ourselves if we, if we can. Pond, 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 across the pond, with Barry and Chad.